Hi guys, welcome to Business 240 Summer 2020. My name is Alan again. I believe that you've seen one video recording so far. Uh, the purpose of this brief recording is to introduce you to the systems that you're going to be using uh, this semester. Uh, first, Insight. So let me share screen and take you to Insight. Insight is essentially our quilt, if you will. If you think of Insight as a quilt, you'll see that these little blocks are like the pieces of the quilt. Uh, Insight allows you to get instructions on how to use our system, search for classes, work on your classes, get onto Canvas, which will be our platform, our learning management system platform and access our libraries and whatnot. My quilt looks different than yours because my quilt involves other areas that are faculty and in institutionally related. Your email for DVC can be accessed as well through Insight. The most important part about Insight is the Canvas tile. Canvas will take you to your dashboard in Canvas which essentially is like a collection of sheets and every sheet is a class. Every tile is a class. And uh, when you click on your class tile, it should open the content for this course. And you are in either section 4135 or section 2112. Sorry, my computer at home is a little bit slower than my computer at work. So things take time between screens. Sometimes things take a long time. Okay. So when you open your Canvas system, you get my welcome message from the homepage and uh, a little bit of background on this course. You also get a collection of pages. And in the collection of pages is where you will see a slightly more detailed description of the course. And you can go to the bottom right hand corner of your screen and click next to follow these pages. And in these pages, you will see uh, more or less the syllabus. Uh, piece by piece, including three tiles that will help you uh, change your user profile and how to set up your browser of preference uh, in order to communicate with Canvas in the most effective way. The next page contains the different objectives for this course. You have technology objectives, uh, you have course structure, and you have learning culture. The, uh, the technology that you will be using primarily is called Canvas. Canvas is the platform we're de describing in this particular video, but you also have another learning management system embedded within Canvas, and it's called My Lab and Mastering by Pearson. And uh, you access My Lab and Mastering by Pearson by going to the link on the left that I'm pointing to that is below the syllabus says my lab and mastering. And the other uh, platform that we'll be learning about technology wise in this course is called StatCrunch. And StatCrunch is included in Pearson My Lab and Mastering. It is your statistical calculator. It's an app that does math for this course. And so we will be learning how to use this particular app. Um, it's really important to learn how to use apps very quickly and to adapt to new apps and to updates of apps all the time. In the modern workplace, uh, a lot of what you use technology-wise are applications that are designed by a handful of very, very large scale companies. For example, Canvas, I believe is owned by Alphabet, which is the same owner, uh, the same company that owns Google. Um, 
And in the commercial world, Salesforce, which is a very large Bay Area company, build software for applications in the uh, commercial space where people try to manage their client relations on a system, be it uh, customers uh, and their orders, be it suppliers and their relationship that a company has with its own suppliers, um, et cetera. So learning how to adapt quickly and use apps quickly, just like when you pick up your cell phone and you use apps there, we're gonna be using an app called StatCrunch, okay? In terms of course structure, I'm gonna send you a short video, sort of like this one every day, one or two. One would be on administrative matters and procedural matters, and the other one would be more about content, more in depth. And that's the way that I will try to convey to you uh, the content and uh, how to apply the substance of this course in useful commercial, nonprofit, government, academic, and personal types of applications of uh, quantitative reasoning uh, using statistics. And um, so you should follow those five bullets that are on that page. Uh, it should take you about one or two hours daily to complete this course. This is a three unit college, very important course. It's, a seven, it's designed to have 72 hours of content in six weeks. So you do the math. It's 12 hours a week. 12 hours a week is about one to two hours a day um, for the week. Um, and the learning culture. Um, to start, we need to sort of get to know each other rather quickly here. So I'll, I go by my name, Alan. And uh, so one of your assignments uh, for today is to getting to know uh, your peers and introducing yourself to your peers and uh, having uh, aspects of your uh, academic person uh, that you want known by your peers in your learning community in your section of class. Um, so I encourage you to either go on the discussion board and present a few bullet points about yourself, or if you'd like to uh, create a short video about yourself, you're always welcome to do that. Uh, it's entirely up to you which way you go. Um, in terms of um, an effective learning culture, I'm trying to be as accessible as possible. You don't have to contact me directly or face to face, but I obviously I am available and I strongly urge you to take advantage of the open hours Monday through Thursday, 1 to 4 p.m., as well as the few slots that I've created on my Zoom so that you can confer privately if there's a need for that, if there is a need on your part for that. Uh, there is no requirement to synchronously meet with me at any time during the course. You do have to complete, of course, all the course activities, including the roughly 18 hours of uh, lab work that you will find under Pearson My Lab and Mastering. Since Pearson My Lab and Mastering is so important, I'm gonna click on it now so you can see what'll happen. What happens when you click on My Lab and Mastering is after a few seconds of connection, uh, the Canvas uh, learning management system will open. It takes more than a few seconds from home. Once the system opens, you will notice that there's a yellow button in the center of the screen that says open my lab and mastering. Okay. As a student, what should happen the first time you enter the system is you should see a registration screen that's like Gmail. So it's very simple. You click on it and you create a Pearson account if you've never used a Pearson published product online which is basically kind of like creating a Gmail account. Very simple, you put in your name, your first name, your last name, 
a contact email and a username and a password and it takes you to a secondary screen and that secondary screen is shown in your syllabus i think it's on page seven of your syllabus and in that page you will see that you have you can buy the license for the product for the course um, electronically and uh, you should i think that there's three different kinds of levels of license i think the one you want is the hundred dollar one not the most expensive one because the hundred dollar one has everything including an e-textbook and including access to a one-year license to StatCrunch as well and um, uh, after you buy it it sends you to Pearson on a full license and the full license looks like this uh, If you get an error message saying that you have to clear your cache and whatnot, um, I will do a video just for that particular type of um, problem. And usually that problem has to do with optimizing the browser settings. Uh, what you would do is uh, follow the directions for recommended browser settings for whichever browser you use, okay? Uh, in my case, I'm using Chrome, so I would clear my cache, and then I would allow five different things. I want to allow cookies, third-party cookies. I want to allow plugins. I want to enable JavaScript. I want to allow uh, pop-ups, and I would like to allow ads in the settings for uh, Chrome. So those are the five allowances. I will put a brief PowerPoint slideshow about these five changes to your browser settings. Whatever the browsers are, they all have the same names. Cookies, pop-ups, ads, Java, plugins. Okay. Let me show you what you should see the first time you log into Pearson. The first time you log into Pearson, what you should see is a registration screen. I'm going through the back end of Pearson to show you what you will actually see in that screen. Uh, you will see a uh, registration screen. You won't see this registration screen. You won't see this registration screen. You won't see this registration screen. This is all automated in your system. By the way, there's a reason why I'm doing this at the pace I am. It's to show you that you're gonna to need to have a, a little bit of tolerance for system speed, especially for a system being kind of on the slow end of things. So, um,
this is the screen that you will see. So you will go from clicking on Pearson My Lab and Mastering below the syllabus to clicking Open My Lab and Mastering. And when My Lab and Mastering settings, the five settings that I discussed are ready to open, then you will have a, a opportunity to do the following. You can pay for the access to my lab for $100. Do not buy the $120 course because you don't need 24 months license. You only need six weeks and at most extra weeks if for some reason uh, you are delayed in your progress and you have to file an incomplete and complete the course in the coming month or so. That sometimes happens when uh, individuals go through something of a problem like uh, work related or family related or medically related time off necessary to complete a course and then you just so all you need is the 18 week license for 100 bucks okay you could also buy that license through our uh, dvc bookstore and what dvc then provides you is a hard copy of the book that comes shrunk wrap with a little cardboard insert that looks very similar to these cards and inside these cards is where the money is Inside these cards, you find an access code that you type it in. So those are the two ways of getting your permanent license. For now, to get started right away, you can get a temporary license by clicking on the footnote that gives you an unrestricted access to the system for two weeks. Um, so you would have to then, by June 29th, go through the process of paying for the access code or paying for the uh, buying it online uh, and immediately, and then you don't have to do anything through the DVC bookstore. And uh, you will see something that'll say business 240, and you will not see 12505 here. You will see a different number depending on your section. Uh, the number appears in your syllabus, but that's not something you need. So, once again, Step one, go to my lab and mastering. Step two, click on the yellow button. Step three, after a little bit of time, if all five settings on your browser are correct, the settings for cookies, the settings for add-ins, the settings for Java, for plugins, and for pop-ups, uh, you will uh, then get this registration screen and you can get two weeks. You can get started right away by clicking on the footnote. Or you can pay for it online right away. Or you could buy an access code via the DVC bookstore and then enter that access code sometime over the next two weeks or right away if you already bought it. So that is the My Lab and Mastering aspect of the, uh, of the page that we were discussing. The, about the environment of the course. The, the, technical, the, the technological environment of the course consists of Canvas, Pearson My Lab, and StatCrunch. Okay, so hopefully by end of day today, you will be able to navigate all three and to do a tour of all three. When you enter My Lab and Mastering, you should be able to enter without any, any problem. And this could be a slow process. If the process is not seamless, you may get the message that we saw earlier, which was a message about an error screen saying that I needed to clear my cache and so on and whatnot. Oftentimes, all it takes is a refreshing of the screen 
and having the your system track all the connections between your Canvas learning management system and Pearson uh, anew, afresh. So sometimes you don't even need to make the changes. If, however, you do need to make the changes, let me show you how to do the changes in Chrome. Okay, just like it says here, clear your cache and cookies. So first go to history. And in your history, you go show full history. And clear your cache. Another way to clear your cache, if you're in a Mac is, you can go to Chrome Preferences. And Chrome Preferences will allow you to make the five changes that I've mentioned under Advanced Changes. So clean your history, clear the cache for your browsing and then go to Chrome Settings or Chrome Preferences Advanced. So you clear browsing data. I have not cleaned my cache in a long time, so I had a lot of information cached, almost a third of a gigabyte. After that clearing takes place, in your settings for Google Chrome, go to where it says advanced.
So now that the cache is clear, we're going to go into advanced settings. And under advanced settings, you will see privacy and security settings. And among these privacy and security settings, we will go to site settings. And you want to make sure that cookies are allowed. And you do not want to block third party cookies. So you do not want to block them. You also want to allow JavaScript. You do not want to block sites from running Flash. So you want Flash to be allowed. You want pop-ups to be allowed and you want ads to be allowed. So once we open up our system to allow for those items, what we will do is we should go back to my lab and mastering, reload the page. This is very important. Reloading the page resets all the linkages between your Canvas session and Pearson. So that when you look for my lab and mastering, You re log in fresh. There. So I understand if you get frustrated when you first try to log into Pearson, but once these connections are all established, it's rare that you would have to uh, go back to having this degree of difficulty that you have seen me having, me, the instructor who set up all these linkages. I'm having trouble connecting from 
my home computer for the very first time. I did this for my home computer because I wanted you to sense how difficult it can be to establish the connections. Once your connections are done, your menu for your Pearson My Stat Lab work for this course is set up. All your assignments are listed there by date, due, and by process. Our first due dates don't come in until June 28th, which is a while from now. Having said that, um, the course then accelerates real quickly, which tells you that the moral of the story is to actually complete these assignments well before their closing date. So these aren't really due dates, they're more like closing dates. By the end of this week, we should be taking these five activities. Lab one, quiz one, lab two, quiz two, and exam one. Every day I will post more videos of how to work through these particular activities. All 30 activities for the semester, including the 18 hours of lab, the six different, the five different exams. One of the exams has comes in two parts. So it's technically six different exam grades. The quizzes that help us prepare for these exams can be taken sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three times, uh, depending on the complexity of the content and uh, learning online can be quite challenging as such. Trial and error is essential in learning. That's why taking a quiz once or twice is a good way of looking at the content, reviewing it, testing for it. And then whenever we do not see success in the first try, we get a second or third chance. The only grade that counts is the highest of all attempts. It's sort of like the long jump in uh, track and field. Um, and then your lab activities also come with uh, trial and error and uh, redemption from trying and trying, from developing grit, essentially. Grit development is really important in online learning. Uh, you may tackle problems by using the study plan, although it's completely optional. You do not have to use study plan. If you want to, I will be showing you how to use it probably tomorrow, Tuesday, the 16th. Your grade book will possess, will contain all your grades as you are completing the content. So you are practically and almost always immediately aware of your grade, uh, excluding the grades you earn through the discussion board on Canvas, which uh, you can also track. Okay. Right now I haven't taken any activity. So as you can see, I have zero points earned out of a potential 1,200 points. StatCrunch is the link to your app that opens and that uh, we will be learning how to use. StatCrunch has its own YouTube channel, so every command in StatCrunch comes with a YouTube video that shows you how to use the commands. There is no extra fee for the usage of StatCrunch. It's already included, bundled in the Pearson My Lab fee. So ignore anything about the licensing costs of StatCrunch. Once you open it, The first time you open it, it's a little complicated because it's establishing all the links between your Canvas from DVC to your Pearson My Lab account to your StatCrunch license. After this first time, that complexity will disappear. You will seamlessly be able to move from Canvas to Pearson to My Lab and Mask to. Uh, Canvas to Pearson, my lab and mastering to StatCrunch. And StatCrunch looks like a spreadsheet application software that has a menu 
The menu that we will be mostly using are the data menu, the graphing menu, and the stat menu. So we'll be visualizing statistics and data. We will be computing statistics from data, and we will be doing a few manipulations of data. Uh, and then there's data compute expressions. And this is how we use a, just a calculator format of the software. We'll be learning how to use the software in the coming weeks. There's a help menu with YouTube videos on every single aspect of the software so that you can adapt. In most workplace environments of today, when you join a company and they used a particular brand of software, the brand of software will come with training materials so that during the first two, three, four weeks of your employment, you train in the technology platforms that the company has adopted so that you can become uh, proficient in them and become a more connected employee to your peers at your workplace. And that experience it's, it involves practice. So it's good to learn how to adopt software in a classroom environment because that you will be likely doing so in any work environment that you in, that you join. So that's the importance of my lab and mastering. The importance of Confer Zoom is that it's how we connect. It's how we interact. So it's important to do that. The important of uh, learning how to use your discussion board is that when you go to discussions, you will see boards that are pinned right now. And uh, your first few activities, introduce yourself, getting to know your classmates, and then the issues of what constitutes success for you in this class and predicting your success. Those items are closing on the Thursday and Saturday of this week. So, you, so during this week, it's really important that we uh, basically become a learning community together and thus introducing ourselves to one another and uh, to going over what constitutes success in this course. Very important. Okay, uh, let me go back to the pages menu. And in particular, let me go beyond the home page into and beyond the module objectives and outcomes for this class, beyond the technology aspects that I've tried to introduce here in a very painful, but uh, you know, it's important that you know that this, this isn't always seamless and transparent. Um, all systems take a while to work. Here's my, uh, here's who I am, uh, Alan. Uh, I've been teaching at DVC for a long time and I put in some uh, professional FYIs in this page. And then your course and learning objectives are listed here as well as in your syllabus. And uh, I've included the navigation Canvas sites. So if you have any problems setting up your Canvas profile or notifications, there are a couple of videos that are very helpful at learning how to navigate Canvas. And then I put in a video clip from Pearson as to how to access online activities. Okay. And after that, I have also uh, put in how I uh, how accessible I am and how I hope to be able to serve your needs. And finally, your course grading policy. So it's important to measure your grade. A lot of you guys, the biggest source of anxiety is not learning the content. The biggest source of anxiety is your grade um, for most students. So in order to address that right up front, it, I'm just pointing out that your grade will be a function of your work and your grit. The grittier you are, the likelier you are to, are to be able to score more and more points progressively as you try and fail, then you try and analyze, and then you try and succeed through your labs and your quizzes. And that'll earn you uh, 
about 40% of the way into a, an A. And then your exams will have plenty of points. You'll have a total of 1,200 points. Your grade will be an A when you, at the end of the semester, accumulate 1,000 or more points. A B and a C are uh, obtained by an accumulation of points in this manner. Okay. So follow this grading policy under the course policies page uh, that's in the pages menu. Uh, and uh, again, I encourage you strongly to not only go over these pages, but you're welcome to go over them in the syllabus. So the syllabus has the same information all in one place. Okay. And uh, pretty much that's um, what I foresee, what I think is a very good introduction to Canvas, to our Canvas system for this semester. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to either text me at the phone number that I included in the syllabus, email me, or, uh, and, and you can email me via your Canvas system, and I will be able to get the email and uh, reply to you within one to two days. Um, and every day you can expect to see a video introducing you to something new or something else about the content for the course. Anyhow, uh, glad to have uh, met you and I hope you have a very event-free, seamless experience connecting yourself to Canvas, to Pearson, and to StatCrunch. Take care.